This is the piece that was on the bottom of the radiator. Uh, the sucky part about aftermarket radiators is the oh, freaking friggity frig holes. So the thing that holds this on are little standouts in the aluminum on the OEM radiator. So you can stick it on here all day long. And that's it, it's not gonna stay because aftermarket stuff is junk. Junk, junk, junk. Frickin' Napa, frickin' aftermarket radiators. There's a reason the OEM radiator is $700 and this one's $200. This is the reason, because none of the plastic stuff's gonna fit back on it. I mean, it fits, it's just not gonna stay. Really awesome, great job, Napa. So let's try this, let's mark where these little guys go. Just kinda hold it there in the middle. It's so frustrating using aftermarket stuff, but this young lady really couldn't afford a OEM radiator, so this is the route we're going. Here's some of the problems you'll run into. Modify. Don't tell the snap-on guy. We're gonna use our flush cuts. We were gonna use some side cutters. This is aluminum, it should cut very smooth. We're gonna go kind of in the middle of those holes. Put a little nick there. Put a little nick right there. We'll just warranty the flush cutters out with the snap on guy to tell them we don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Yep, when all else fails, play dumb. That got me through most of my life. Let's see, these holes are directly across from one another so we can do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the radiator. There. Now that that's done, we should be able to grab them very gently and pry little tabs up. That's all we had to do is make these little notches so we could pull little tabs up there, push the little ones down right here, make sure you cut through all the way. It's not going to affect the radiator at all, so. If you're down there slamming away on the keyboard, don't. Okay, there's that. Now, technically, I'm hoping, all the right in the world, we'll get this thing to click on here. We'll be able to bend these tabs up a little bit. We cut them far enough just it's just got to hold this thing on until we get it in the car and then it will hit the lower radiator support and that should be good i'm gonna get a little pair of pliers bend them up and then get this to stick on a little better Try this. Hook them on the bottom. I've got them standing up pretty tall right now. There, they're all poking through, and now it's on there. We're gonna have to do the same thing to the top, but it just kind of sucks when you have to do that, you know. But all we did, like I say, is notch them out so the little guys stick through there. And that's that. So let's uh, set this here. Let's find the top piece and do the same thing to the top. It's bad enough the freaking radiator was all beat up in the box. So we'll take and mark this side. Like I say, we're just gonna do the same, same thing. We just wanna mark them so we know where they're at. I won't show you this process. All right, we know where they're at. I'm gonna notch them out, bend them out. 
That way we at least do a good job. Re remove. Let's go ahead and slip her in now. We've got all the plastic bits on it. Yeah, aftermarket radiators sure are, they're really hit or miss. I've used every brand out there. They're all junk. If it's a very complicated radiator job to do, uh, I won't give the customer a choice. It's, you know, OEM or nothing. Like if you're working on them, oh, or them little junk Chevy Sonics or whatever they are, you know, where it's like a four hour job, you gotta pull the air charge cooler and condenser and that whole deal and everything all clicks together. Like I say, those ones, I don't give the customer the option. It's just, you know, OEM or nothing. This one, you know, a job like this where it's pretty easy to put a radiator in. And, you know, there's some financial concerns. We'll go, we'll go aftermarket, but I'm gonna push this back through. There we go, get that plastic thing back where it was. We'll hook our lower hose back up. It's not just nap them, it's not like they don't make the radiators, it's just whatever Chinese company they buy them from. If you really want to humor yourself, call the tech support and say, you know, it won't fit. The plastic pieces won't go back on. And I guarantee you, when you talk to the guy, you're gonna be the first person that ever had that complaint. And they don't understand. You must have the wrong application. Blah, blah, blah. I can tell you almost word for word what they'll say. Maybe we'll call them just to humor ourselves. That's always comical. Before we get super deep, let's make sure our fans are gonna fit. We don't wanna put the whole front end together and then find out the fans don't fit. That's no fun. up Oops. and this whole well almost lines up what a freaking joke what a joke a bad joke rubber up on top of our fan let me just make sure the fans sitting down in the saddle here all the way and it is Having a shop kitty makes you stop from wanting to murder people, which is helpful. They calm you down a little bit. We get a different size. You gotta be careful, cause see, with these coarse screws, you're cutting new threads in that radiator. So you just gotta make sure she's lined up. Run her home. You know, just make sure it's straight is all you can do. And before we forget, we'll plug that in. We'll clip that on. We'll take this off, throw it in the bucket of, of uh, a little dongers there you got. Whoa! Oh, idiot. Make a mess. Hook your hose up.
put our clamps back on. I put them right back where they were. That way nobody can tell you it's even here. Let me clean up my mess and we'll go down on this old girl. The next question worth one million dollars is do they fit? Some of the stuff we should have checked prior to installing. Not like a glove. Leave that one loose and we'll go do the other side because one thing I want to make sure is that in the radiator support down there that we're in all the way with that rubber. And we are. Hold a little pressure down on it. Ooh, almost pinched my thumb. One clickety clack is the torque spec. One clickety clack. We'll uh, not put these in yet because we need to put our AC condenser back on there. Can't quite finish the job of the shoulder. We'll switch to the deep one here. Just needs the final torque spec. There it is, that's final torque. Now these are coarse screws, so be careful. There's that one, get the top one. There's that one. Now we can put the uh, plastic clips back in it. It's got a little alignment peg on the bottom. Line that up in the lower support. Put your clip there clip up there, line it up in the lower support. Can you imagine being a body guy using all aftermarket crap, aftermarket body parts, radiators, AC condensers. It's got to be a disaster. Clip your horn wire harness back in. You'd have to have a lot of bondo if I was a body guy. like Lego. That was easy. Yep, cars are all plastic nowadays. Ironically enough, they're a lot safer than they were back when they were all metal. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna go through and put all these clips back in. All 10 of them. Slip that back in. Lines up perfectly. Get that little guy. Ricola. You pretty much have to do that every time. Look at that. Let's go get some silicone grease. Oh, too much. Stick a little bit of that in the hole. There, now it pops together smooth. I need something different than the Oogie Doogie. We don't want to go too much. I'm feeling right.
click, click. There is that. We'll lubricate our nipple tops right here. That way our little plastic shield pops on nice. Nipple top, that's a name of a mountain, you know, in the PRNY, in the Adirondack region, if you're a 46er. If you're a 46er, you've climbed old nipple top. I don't know if it's in the Dix mountain range. <laughs> they got all kinds of great names up there. Google it if you don't believe me. This is always a 46er, it's the only reason I know. It's a big mountain climber. Oh, just like a little kid. This little has three kids and me. We're gonna plug our lights in. I've already put the bolts back in the bumper cover. The two bolts that hold the bumper cover on. There, that one's plugged in. These two bolts right here, one on each side. all lined up. That's all lined up. That'll kind of hold it for us. Just drop it. There, that'll hold this. We'll get all the screws lined up. There's the one I dropped. And then get this thing all buttoned up. some plastic jiggly bits here in the sides. Put these three in the bottom. They're different than the ones that go on the top or around the other side. If you made that observation when you were tearing it apart, you'll know. Then we've only got four or five other ones here. We'll stick them in. Now we just need to fill it up. It takes the Mopar, the 10 year, the 50-50. I hope I got enough around the shop. I just ordered a new case because I didn't realize how low we were getting. Well, now that that's full, we're going to crack the bleeder loose here on top of the thermostat housing. Let the air out, and then the level in here should drop. There, now it's peeing out straight coolant. It's perfect engineering, so it dribbles right on the belt. That baby is up above the cold mark, but we're going to start it up. And that's, that's probably going to drop down a little bit here. I'm sure there's still a little bit of air in it. We're pretty well done, folks. Cold level's good. I gave it a little peek. I didn't see any leaks. The fan cycled once. The train's coming through town. We got good heat as you can tell. Temp gauge is all the way up where it should be. I think this lady's going to be happy. There's a look at the old radiator. You can see the snail trails on it from where it was leaking before. So she was going to try to wait till December when she could afford to do it. But uh, I had her stopping in, you know, once a week, check the, the coolant, and it was going through so much. I told her, you can't wait. You can't wait any longer, lady. So I'll crunch you some money so you can get it done. And uh, that way there, cause I told her, I think it would be kind of silly to blow up the car over a, you know, stupid leaky radiator. So that's it, folks. We'll leave it at that. Um, you see the, you know, the woes of installing a used, or not a used, an aftermarket radiator. Um, and like I say, it's not just Napa, it just happens to be where we bought it from. Uh, but it's something silly, you know, I mean, this is all, all it is, it's just these little, these little tabs, you know. And it's essentially what we did is just cut it and, and add those in there, but, and, you know, I mean, other than that, it fit, fit pretty well. It's just some of the stuff gets really frustrating. Like I say, something like this where it's easy to put a radiator in, it's not that big a deal, but if you have one that's a, you know, four, five, six hour job, 
OEM only. You know, if the OEM one's crap and only lasted, what is this car, 18? So what, you got five-year-old car, OEM junk. You know, how much worse is the aftermarket? Who knows? I don't know, but what I do know is I want to see your comment in that comment section. Questions, comments, the Insta, the Facebook. You guys know what to do. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.